What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, JB, and we are here with the episode review of The Shy. <clears throat> Season 4, Episode 5, The Spook Who Sat By The Door. Interesting name for the episode title. All right, you guys, so before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, you're not already subscribed, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, you guys. Now, with that being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the review, shall we? All right, you guys, so I'm trying to figure out why I want to start the episode up. Right. So let's talk about Shad real quick, you guys. So, you know, Shad is out of prison and, you know, he has to have work with being out of prison. So we see Shad, um, and he has an interview, right? So he's ironing his clothes and, you know, you might ask him, you know, is everything good? He says, yes. So she says, oh, you need a tie. So then she comes back with this tie that she got for Trig when they thought he was going to go legit. So she gives him the tie. He says, I don't even know how to tie a tie. She says, <clears throat> she says, oh, you know, I got you. So she goes to try to tie the tie and then he flips the hell out on her. So then he's trying to put the tie on. He's like, he didn't know how to put, like he didn't know how to put the tie on. So he got frustrated and threw it down. So then we later see Imani, she's telling Trig that Shad needs to go because, you know, she's not going to be treated like shit in her own house. And she told him that he clocked her. So she's upset with Trig because she's like, when it comes to you, you say one thing, but then you do something completely opposite of that. So then we see Shad, he's at his interview. And then, you know, the guy that's interviewing him, he asks him, why does he want to work there? He says, because he needs a job. And then he says, you know, he, he's willing to, you know, put in the hard work to move his way up in, you know, in, in ranks. So then he tells the guy that he was locked up and he just needs an opportunity, which I 100% understand that, you know, just because, you know, everyone has a past, but it's what you do with your present that makes the biggest difference. <clears throat> but I will say with Shad, his attitude is piss poor at best. So then he goes out there and Trig, you know, asks him how did it go? And why did he ask that question? Because he flips out again. So Trig tells him, like, you know what? We need to have a talk. So then we see Trig and, and Shad. They're at a bar talking, right? So Shad says that, you know, he <clears throat> he keeps repeating this. He said that he did some time for Trig. And that he could have snitched on Trig. Trig was like, you know, I didn't do anything. So Trig tells him that he needs to move out. And that, you know, Imani is the lady of the house. He said, he like, he's like, that ain't no lady. And then he asked him, he's like, are you gay? Just because he's with a trans woman doesn't mean he's gay. <clears throat> I, hate, I hate that ignorant, you know, thought process. So Trig puts a timeline on, you know, Mr. Shot to be out of the house. So, yeah, so that's actually it with those three. So we're going to move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to briefly mention Kevin, Jake, and Gemma. And then we'll wrap them up when we get to the gala. So we see Kevin. So Kevin is at the crib and he texts Gemma that he got his, you know, his tux. And Gemma was like, cool. So then he says, well, how about I send you a picture, you know, so that way we can coordinate. She was like, nah, I'm good. And then he was like, is it your dad? So she's trying to play like it's her daddy. That's the issue. And it ain't her daddy. Oh, excuse me, I'm burping. My bad. Oh, jeez. My bad. I ain't even trying to burp in your face like that. So, Gemma is giving Kevin the coldest of shoulders at this point. So, so we do see her. Kevin actually called her. And we see her. And both she and Jake at this point low down dirty dogs like I can't stand either one of them they some snakes <clears throat> so Jake tells Gemma to tell Kevin about wanting to be with him and if she doesn't do it then he will do the honor and tell Kevin himself and I'm like you that you that grimy that you you know what you're doing is effed up but you that grimy to go and tell your boy like hey your girl that you with she don't want to be with you she want to be with me. Like, how can you tell your homie that? How do you tell your homie that his girl wants to be with you? I don't get it. But let's move on. All right, guys. Next, let's talk about Jada and Emmett them. 
So Jada, we see her with uh, Dre. Now here's what I'm so confused about. So Jada's doing some, re you know, reflecting on her life, and she's also written her will that she wants um, for Dre to execute in case something happens to her. She's like, what about Emmett? And she was like, you know, my son is doing good now, but uh, no. So then Emmett comes in with some food there at um, his restaurant. And, you know, he tells her he'll cook for them. Well, cook for her, so she, for her to come over to the place. So Dre t says to, um, to Jada, like, please tell Nina so that my wife will stop thinking that I'm out here, you know, doing God knows what. And I thought the whole thing was, you know, once, you know, Jada told Emmett that that would be clear for Dre to tell Nina. But Jada says no, <clears throat> that she doesn't want to, you know, right now, she just, just doesn't want to be pitied, which I get that. But your friend here, your friends, not just one of your friends, both of your friends, Jada and, um, well, Dre and Nina are both your friends. Y'all keeping the secret from her. And at this point, Nina is thinking that y'all might be having an affair. So it's better to just tell her what's going on instead of keeping her in the dark. But whatever. So then we see Sway. So he's cooking breakfast. And Emmett is like, he ain't eating that shit. I'm like, Emmett, it's food. What is he going to do? But whatever. So Emmett is upset with Jada because... Sway knew about her cancer before him, but if it wasn't for Sway, she would have still had cancer and nobody would have known. She would have had cancer and would not have gotten treatment. So you might want to thank Mr. Sway, just put that out there. But they have a heart to heart with one another. So then, you know, we see Jada, she's really <coughs> sick, <coughs> and Sway is by her side. And that's when he tells her he loves her. It's like, oh. I wasn't really expecting that. He was like, what were you expecting? Shit, I wasn't expecting it either. It threw me off guard that he loved her. So then we later see Emmett. He's talking to Darnell about Jada. And Darnell says, did she ask about me? Emma was like, no, she didn't ask about you. But you know what, man? Get out. <clears throat> so Darnell tells him, you know, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. So Emmett is in the bathroom and Darnell is there being on the door. So Emmett comes out and he says that, you know, he tells uh, Darnell that, you know, Jada is sick. So let's move on, you guys. All right, guys, next let's move over to Dre. So Dre is at home with Nina, who's upset. So Nina is upset, saying that Keisha needs to go to the hospital to have the baby. So you guys remember in the first episode, we saw Keisha. She was in, you know, one of those baths. You know, she was in um, a swimming pool doing one of those at-home births. So then Nina asked Dre where she's coming from, and she says she's coming from the gym. So they go take a shower with each other, right? So after they get out the shower, Dre's phone is going off, and Nina asks her, like, who is that? And she's like, oh, it's just some work stuff. So then we see Keisha later in the episode. She goes through her baby book, and, you know, she and Nina are looking through some of the pictures, and then Keisha's like, I won't have this, will I? And I was like, Ke I think Keisha might be having some, you know, I won't say regrets, I think Keisha's doing a little soul searching to, to decide if, you know, she actually wants to give the baby up for adoption or if she actually wants to keep the baby. It's got to be a difficult decision when it comes to, you you know, some a situation like Keisha's. So then we see Keisha. She's at work, and there's a new guy there, and she's, you know, showing him the ropes of the store. <clears throat> so then, you know, they go outside, and they talk. So... He has, you know, she asked him why is he working there. He says, you know, I went to college on a basketball scholarship, but I got hurt, so I'm back here now. She's like, oh, that kind of was kind of what, like, you know, something that happened to me. You know, I had a scholarship with track and field, but this happened. He says, yeah, I, he said, I know. He said, and I'm glad you survived. So then Keisha's walking, and she has a contraction. She thought it was a Braxton Hicks. I'm like, I don't think that's a Braxton Hicks, baby. That's a contraction. So we see Keisha, she's still on the clock working, and you can see the time as it's going by. I'm like, Keisha is in full-blown labor at this point. So then we see them doing the water birth. Nina is still once again saying, I think we should go to the hospital. But, you know, they're like, no, let's do it. We're doing it here. And they do the water birth, and more power to women who do that. I used to watch the baby special on TLC back in the day, 
and even watching it with you know the drugs more power to women you know more power to the women that give birth <clears throat> at one point Nina was like fuck this we need to go to the hospital but Keisha does eventually deliver the baby I don't know if it was a girl or a boy but whatever it is you know it was a screaming baby but um let's move on and wrap the episode up you guys all right you guys so let's wrap the episode up so we'll talk about Duda and um this gala so we saw Duda earlier in the episode as they were setting up for the gala so Gemma's dad who's just as annoying as his daughter is you know there he's I guess he's put on the event he was getting on Tracy about I guess her speech so you know she thanks Duda for giving her and Trig a shot and then she asked him if you know about the trap house he says I know nothing about that she says, but I bet you know the person who does. So then she asked him, is she in bed with the gangbanger? And basically, he told her, either get with it or get the fuck on. I was like, well, I be. Okay. So then it's time for the gala. So we see, you know, Jake and Kevin getting ready for it. So at the gala, Kevin and Jake, Kevin and Gemma, well, no, Gemma and Jake dipped off, right? So they're all going to be some ambassadors. Um... Gemma did eventually have a conversation with Kevin, but it was a very small conversation. Meanwhile, Jake is doing everything he can to make Gemma jealous, which he succeeded at it. <clears throat> so then we see Rose. Rose tells Duda that she wants a spot in his administration. And he tells her, bitch, please. His words, exact, not mine. So she tells him, either you give me a job or I'll file for divorce. And I don't think you want that one. So then we see Tracy as she's giving her speech at the gala and as a community leader. So we see Jake and Gemma once again leave it out and Kevin follows him behind him this time. So Jake and Gemma are in a stairwell, right? Gemma, got to be honest with you, getting on my nerves. But I said, I've been saying that for a while now. Actually, both she and Jake are. Poor Kevin. He found Jake and Gemma with their lips locked. So then after Tracy's, after Tracy's speech, Duda had to give up and give his speech. So it was at this point that I realized this whole gala is for the pitch for the Olympics. I was like, okay, I guess. Now, mind you guys, remember when Jake and Gemma got caught by Kevin, they looked shocked. But then we later see them in the episode walking down the hallway, hands interlocked. I was like, oh, so dirty. <clears throat> so dirty so then we see Imani she was in her feelings talking to Tracy because Tracy didn't mention the ladies at the trap house Tracy said I wanted to but you know time constraints I couldn't really mention them so then Duda comes up to uh, Tracy saying that they make a good team and he tells her he's heading to the roof and he would like for her to join him she was like yeah you know I'll join you just got a few more hands to shake so after she walks away Gemma's dad comes up to him and tells him to be careful and we see him go up to the uh, roof and actually this is where the episode ended the episode ended with the gunshot to Duda so now the question is going to be who shot Duda so let me know in the comment section who do you guys think shot Duda do you think it there are multiple suspects at this gala I have three so from the gala I would say Rose I would say Gemma's daddy, and I would say Tracy. But top of the list for me is going to be Rose and Gemma's daddy. I think those two have the most to gain from getting rid of him, and more specifically, Rose. But we'll see. But let me know what you guys think. But that's the review, you guys. Um, leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else. Share the video and until the next one, stay safe, take care of yourselves, wash your hands, wear your mask, and socially distance, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And if you guys don't wear a mask, be safe, be blessed. I'll see you guys later.